Devil May Cry 2 is not a very good game. This is probably not news to you since this fact is very, very, very well documented online. The thing is, most people are smart enough to heed the warnings of those who have trespassed its infested lands before and don't quite understand just how bad it really is. To really put it into perspective, this is a tale of a friend of mine from college. Due to his job, my friend Jake only has so much time to put into video games, and unfortunately FF14 and Valorant have both infected him with their Orochimaru curse marks, shackling him to them forever. Jake however does still make an effort to play more single player or story focused games when he can, and one day back in 2022 he decided he was going to play through the Devil May Cry series for the first time. He even streamed it to the Discord group that we're both in, and everybody there had a grand old time. We sat there, had a good laugh, giving Jake various tips and tricks to really get the most out of his single playthrough and make it as enjoyable as possible. And Jake ended up really enjoying it, so much so that he beat it in a single sitting. Sadly, I don't have a picture to share of this particular part of the stream, but he was positively beaming with energy. I'd never seen him full of so much life before. I do however have this picture, specifically taken a few hours later after my friend had decided that his high was strong enough to carry him through DMC2 despite all of our warnings. Look into this man's eyes and see what it's like to watch his dark soul lose all of the light that it had been previously filled with. See what just one to two hours of Devil May Cry can really do to a man who is already on cloud nine. And the incredibly sad truth of this is that this is after he spent 40 minutes troubleshooting the game as even the HD collection on PC tries to stop you from playing DMC2 by making it crash on boot if you're either in full screen or don't have the very specific old drivers that it depends on. So the question I want to ask today is, what if this didn't need to be the case? Is it actually possible that we could save DMC2 from itself and turn it into an actually good game? And the answer lies in this first episode of a new series I want to start on this channel called Hidden Potential, or whatever other name I might think of that's better, where I'll be looking at fan-made patches, mods, and remakes of games both good or bad to see if they're able to be significantly improved thanks to them, and today we will be looking at and reviewing the Devil May Cry 2 Definitive Edition mod. Yeah, let's go all the way to hell. Now, as bad as Devil May Cry 2 is, there are a few cool ideas in there that would go on to be better executed in later games. The trickster and gunslinger styles, for example, were basically invented in DMC2, and stuff like Trish's round-trip focused gameplay was much better refined and made into a much more fully-fledged character in DMC4 Special Edition. Ultimately, all of the game's problems revolve around the fact that it was effectively made in six months. Aesthetically, it's incredibly dull and drab. The story is even less there than the original, which is honestly kind of impressive, and the combat is incredibly unpolished and imbalanced, with guns reigning supreme as the be-all, end-all option for every encounter. Now, mashing the shoot button is not actually the quickest way to take down enemies, but it is the easiest and is significantly safer than actually playing the game as intended, which is never Never really worth it. And this is for two main reasons. For starters, the obvious reason is guns do a ton more damage than any other DMC game, as well as a ton of extra stun damage. Which means they're not only able to juggle enemies, they're able to launch them off of the floor just by themselves. The other reason is while you do actually start with a larger arsenal of attacks than you did in DMC1, you don't really gain any new moves over the course of the game, so that old moveset very quickly overtakes what you have in 2. And something else that should be mentioned is the fact that DMC2's different ground combos are not only pretty redundant in terms of functionality, but also incredibly inintuitive to actually perform, as they revolve around letting go of the lock-on and moving the analog stick at certain points during the combo. Now, the Definitive Edition mod does many things, but I feel like the core of all of its changes is fixing this main problem by making gun spamming less viable and making attack animations not 
not only much faster, but also giving you more options to really lean in on that player expression focused combat that character action games are known for. It does this by literally speeding up various individual attack animations by making them all at least about 20% faster, but it also messes around with those animations a lot to make brand new combo strings. The game still has to rely on that same analog stick jiggering system to perform different combos, but what's different about it now is that all three weapons that you can equip on Dante and Lucia do more than just change stuff like the range, the damage and the attack speed. It now gives each weapon its own unique moveset with its own set of combo strings and also allows you to switch between these swords with the push of the R2 button. It isn't quite weapon switching from 3, 4 and 5 but it does expand your move list by quite a bit. Using Dante for example, your combo C with Rebellion is this kind of weird looking jury rigged version of DMC1's million stab combo. Whilst combo C with Vendetta ends with DMC2's version of Million Stabs, a move that was originally only available as a combo finisher while in Devil Trigger. Merciless's combo C on the other hand gets a weaker wide hitting spin attack combo that acts a bit like a crowd control tool with its much bigger hitbox. There are the basic 4 or 5 combos from the vanilla version of the game in there, just on different weapons like the combo Dante uses in SMT3 that ends with a built in launcher, but they were also able to create brand new ones that use animations from weird sources like the shoulder tackle and spin kick moves that are usually only able to be performed by pressing R1 on attack with no direction immediately after landing in either your normal or your DT state. Attacks and animations that were practically unused and useless before actually get to see the light of day as combo finishers, and they even have their own weird niche use cases like the aforementioned spin kick being able to trip up enemies. And I have to say, it actually really works. The increased speed of attacks not only makes the game feel a lot better in general, but the new attacks themselves also breathe enough life into the combat that once you know what you're doing, you can actually get some mildly stylish shit popping off that while it doesn't quite flow and connect as perfectly as something like DMC5, it's still a huge improvement over what was there before. And it even has some really bizarre tech I was not expecting to see, like Weapon Switch Offset from the DMC reboot, where switching weapon mid-combo will actually take you to that weapon's part of the combo. Meaning that you can do something like using Merciless for three very quick attacks, but then switching to Vendetta and using that sword's combo finisher. And this ends up turning those 11 or 12 different attack strings into a whole bunch of different potential combinations. And this isn't just for Dante, this also applies for Lucia as well. The only problem with her is that her combos definitely seem a lot less defined than Dante's, meaning that it's a bit harder to tell her different combos apart from one another, particularly in the heat of action, and because of this they kind of all blend together a bit. Still a really big improvement over the vanilla release, but it does mean that her attacks all kind of feel a bit samey. On the bright side though, they did give her a few unique things to help better set her apart from Dante and also make up for the fact that she doesn't have things like Sin Devil Trigger like he does. So she does get access to stuff like dodge cancelling out of attacks as well as dodge offset meaning that she can continue whatever combo she was doing after dodging just like Bayonetta can. Trish on the other hand already had Dante's DMC1 moveset so she already felt pretty good in vanilla at least compared to Dante and Lucia. So for her she just has a few minor tweaks here and there and also some more options for some better control over her round trip ability. One thing this mod is sadly not capable of doing is nerfing the guns to an extent where they're no longer the safest option anymore. I'm not sure if this is due to the fact that the whole thing is done in cheat engine, which is really impressive by the way, or due to the fact that several bosses in the game demand that you only use guns to beat them, and that if you nerf them too much it would likely turn the game into a slog during those parts. But either way, it's kind of unfortunate that doing this is still an option. Luckily, due to combat being a lot more engaging now, and the guns getting a albeit small but still a slight nerf, it means that you should be significantly less inclined to take this route. 
In fact, if anything, the mod makes your melee options the slightly overtuned tool in your arsenal. Dante is still fairly grounded and evenly balanced, but the speed of Lucia's attacks usually means that you can even stagger enemies that have a degree of super armor just by mashing whatever attack button you want, especially if you've got DT on hand. Meanwhile, Trish's upgraded round trip absolutely decimates enemies, especially when you're in there slugging away at them too. Now, these are all of the main changes, but there's a good slew of others that really help the game significantly in both cool mechanical ways as well as just really convenient quality of life improvements as well. Not to mention a few optional things that I'll get to in a sec. Firstly, the different gemstones in your amulet can now be switched in real time just like your weapons via using the D-pad, which not only just makes things more convenient since you don't need to go in and out of the menu, but you can also swap these properties so much on the fly that you can use multiple different aspects of them in single combos. So you'll actually be able to make use of stuff like the increased hit stop from Iceheart or the extra range from Thunderheart and the time stop from Chronoheart during these Devil Trigger combos, whilst still being able to use the increased damage or health regen from the other gems, making the whole thing feel like a not as good style system. How useful this fact actually is, is a question for people more skilled at making combo mads than I am, but even if their use case is very low, the potential it now adds and the possible options that you technically have available to you now are adding more depth to the combat, no matter how minimal it might be. And even as a casual player, you can still do things like switch to Chrono Heart for one attack and then switch back to Offense Heart so that you can really lay in the damage during those three seconds of stopped time. The last change that I think directly affects the quality of the combat is fake jump cancelling, something that I honestly couldn't quite get to work. I'm not sure if it was just that I installed something wrong or I'm just, you know, bad at the game, but essentially it's just a kind of jank implementation of the jump cancelling you know and love from every other DMC game, whether it be dive kick and helm splitter spamming from 3 onwards or just simple shotgun flying from DMC 1. Even if it doesn't quite work the same and I'm just a little bit off, it's still incredibly cool that it's available. The last few changes are stuff like the ability to quote unquote sprint by holding down R3, which will kind of just make your character's run cycle speed up like you've put them on fast forward. Again, like the amulet swapping and the jump cancelling, it is a little janky in its implementation, but like those other additions as well, it's nevertheless very appreciated to get through some of those longer, tedious parts of just running from point A to point B ever so slightly quicker. The style ranking system has also been tweaked ever so slightly. DMC2 always kind of acted like a halfway point between the kind of combo rank that DMC1 had and then the general performance rank that you had in 3 onwards. The two changes here are essentially it takes an extra second before your style rank decays and also instead of just completely disappearing when it does, it will just drop you down to the previous rank, which is just a small change to make it more in line with all of the future games in the series. So the mod is able to heavily improve the combat system, but a game is so much more than its singular core element, and the real question is, does the Definitive Edition mod actually make the game good? Does it fix Devil May Cry 2? And the answer is... kinda? Not really? DMC2 is plagued, infested even, with so many problems and Pretty much none of them are in the realms of possibility for a modder to fix. You'd essentially need to remake the game from the ground up and take a lot of creative liberties. And at that point, you might as well just be making your own game. Enemy encounter and boss design for one is still nearly as miserable as it ever was, with the AI being absolutely brain dead and three of the boss fights being practically gun only endeavors. The mod does kind of try to make up for the brain dead AI by tripling the enemy's damage output, which can get especially scary on hard mode since it stacks with the pre-existing damage buff, which also happens to come with slightly increased enemy aggressiveness, so 
that does kind of fix things a little bit. But while this does keep you on your toes a little bit more and make things a bit more interesting in your average fight, this also means that you're practically made of glass and you can very easily get one-shotted by certain bosses, even with a ton of health and on normal mode, which does make it a kind of frustrating double-edged sword. And while hard mode's increased aggressiveness does mildly offset the brain-dead enemies, it strangely doesn't increase their health values like every other DMC game, so unless you're fighting these blood goat demons, who have a ton of health and despite their size can be comboed like any normal enemy, then you're gonna have to kick things up to Dante Must Die if you really want to start styling on those enemies. Though this is where one of those optional modifications come into play that I mentioned before. Now there are things like giving Dante infinite jumps, infinite devil trigger, and a longer stinger which is actually quite interesting. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work when you're close up to an enemy, so realistically you're going to want to use the shitty DMC2 vanilla version. But the modifier that I think really works here is the must style mode that is available straight out of the definitive edition of the reboot, where you'll do no damage to enemies until you're able to reach S rank. This is a situational improvement for the most part, as it does force you to actually engage with the combat and not slip back into using guns, and does allow you to treat the enemies as a punching bag so you can play with your food just like Dante tends to do. Though this also sounds agonizing when dealing with several bosses and the underwater levels, so it's a little bit hit and miss. Luckily, you can turn it off and on in real time. As for everything else, like level design, visuals, story, music, etc, it's all left untouched for very obvious reasons, and so nothing is really fixed there, but that is understandable. The simple fact of the matter is the Definitive Edition mod does not and cannot make DMC2 into a good game, but it can make it into an interesting experience. And I fully believe that the mod does exactly what it says on the tin. With the mod running, it is what I would consider the definitive edition of DMC2. And what it does do is, while it doesn't make the whole game good, it does inject some good into it. If you're a huge DMC fan who's just looking to try something new to mess around with, even if it's just for a few hours, then there is fun to be had here. Even if it might dry up very, very quickly, it's something that I think is worth checking out just for the novelty of it. And I'd also recommend it to any poor soul who has yet to play DMC2, but is about to let that morbid curiosity get the better of them. Sure, you're not going to be able to get the sheer, raw, visceral feeling of awfulness that you probably were looking for when you decided that you wanted to play DMC2, but you're all still going to be playing a terrible game, just one with some mildly good combat, knowing that mildly good is leagues above what you would have been playing. You'll be able to get most of the experience without all of the trauma to go along with it. Overall, while the mod is not exactly going to be dragging me back to DMC2 anytime soon, in fact I doubt I will ever play the game ever again after doing this video, what it did do is make the experience enjoyable enough for me to actually see it through. And that alone is bloody impressive. Hello there. How you doing? Craft here. In the flesh. And uh, firstly, I'd just like to say thank you for watching my video. And also, sorry for not really uploading anything. I really wanted to strike while the iron was hot with the DMC Peak of Combat video. And in the end, I just kind of ended up playing a lot of Helldivers 2 and Trails into Reverie and reading some Dr. Aphra Star Wars comics and all sorts of stuff. Just kind of having me time more than anything. That being said, while I haven't been working directly on videos, I've been working on a lot of script ideas. So hopefully I shouldn't have to wait and have a big long process with making some more. And I've also just been playing around with a few things, like getting a camera for example. Having a window behind me isn't too useful since 
the good lighting from recording in the day means I'll blind you, and if I record at night, I kind of look a little purple. Hopefully I can get that sorted out. I probably just need to buy a soft light or something. I don't know what I'm actually doing. And you'll probably get a few camera cuts here and there, but I want to do some more stuff with this channel and kind of keep using it to improve my editing skills and working with a camera and all that sort of nonsense and stuff. So, you know, either way, thanks again for watching this video. And if you're still watching it now, then doubly thanks. You're a real one. I did have this whole bit that I wanted to do where I was going to be wearing two pairs of shades and take one off, but I can't find them. So unfortunately, I'm not holding up that channel brand like I should be doing. I'm sorry, Cool Holo. I'll do better next time. But either way, that's all for now. I'm just doing this to show that I can and I want to. And until next time, see ya.